today on Choose Your Own Path. We are going to make hexagon grids for our set. We'll try. Alright guys, welcome back to Choose Your Own Path. So, um, I had someone contact me through Facebook on one of their D&D groups and uh, they were talking about um, their play sets and what they believe they like to use a hexagon grid. Now we all know the square one inch grid is, um, I'm thinking what most of us would be making. So I took a look at um, getting some grids printed up. Um, I took a two inch grid, which when you measure them, it's from corner to corner, right? Though, that would take up quite a bit of space and it just looks a bit too big. Now, if you've got a, a character of miniature, it usually has a one inch base around it. So, roughly something like this. Now, it looks good to go on top, though it's still way too big. So from there, I figured that would be too big. So then I went to the one inch grid, which is again measured from corner to a corner. The thing with that is, again, one inch, you would lose the hex of turning um, which way you're going. I don't really know how people play this, that sort of grid, but it's based on uh, the way your direction and you want to move to the right or left it counts as one move to turn then to each space I'm assuming that didn't work either so I looked a little bit long a little more and I found a one and a half inch grit which would be perfect because that gives just enough room for it to go on and it won't uh, lose the edging of the hexagon problem with printing out this is they have a quarter inch gap between each one of them and if you were to use that on any kind of board you'd use a lot of space so what we're going to do first is take out our grids I've printed about four of them and they're all the same so what I'm going to do first of all I'm going to cut them all out I know it seems like a long process, but I'm going to cut them all out. And then I'm going to push them together and then then sort of uh, tape them on the back. And then we will sort of trace that on our styrofoam. And then we'll kind of engrave it in with either uh, a pen or maybe even use the burger. So we'll start off by just, as they're all lined up, we can cut them all at once. So we're just going to cut on the lines and get rid of get rid of the excess which shouldn't be too difficult to do which is nice is we're doing them all at once um, which means that we can get we don't have to do one at a time right that makes sense this is something new and um, definitely something different so I will continue cutting out all these grids I'll get back to you all right so what we, I did next was I took all the hexagons and I cut them I cut them out all right so what I had to do was make the pattern so it would fit on the styrofoam so I had to cut each piece out. And then what I did was I glued it to the back of just a normal piece of paper so that they would all, they wouldn't have gaps in them. Now, the difference between how you set up your hectagon that I think is uh, the way it's horizontal or vertical, uh, meaning that if you go, if you're playing on a surface that's facing a certain way, the movement is different right so I don't know that's just what I read <laughs> so next thing we're gonna do is take our piece and we're just gonna place it on um, the 
styrofoam and we're just trying to level it getting it even on there best as we can so lining up one end and pulling the other and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take some tape and I'm just gonna tape down the pieces so it can stay where it's not gonna move having it even even all the way through like so getting all all the edges around like I said I've never done this before so this is something we are doing as a new build for someone who asked me on Facebook if it was possible to put hexagon I'm sure it is it's out there I haven't seen any yet but we're gonna try so once you got your piece of tape on it securely like so it's on there So it's on there. Now we have to get the pattern on to the styrofoam. What I'm thinking of doing is just taking um, something, I don't know, maybe something not sharp because I don't want to go through it. Maybe a pencil. And just by pressing down hard enough and following the lines should allow me to see an indentation inside of the grid. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we'll try a couple of pieces to see what it looks like. And then we'll kind of lift it up. I could actually see the pieces in there. So I will do the whole thing and get back to you and show it. I'm showing it. So all I'm doing is I'm tracing out, pushing hard enough so that it makes an indentation into the styrofoam. All right? All right. <clears throat> so we traced it out one. Let's see what it looks like. <coughs> so what we have now is our octagon piece. So what I'm thinking to do now is to maybe to get this to look so we can see it is to take our uh, burner and that one's just too big so we're, not, we're just going to turn it on. We're not going to go so high and we're just going to lightly burn them out so we can see the hexagons. I'll continue this, get back. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to take our rolling pin that we made with a bunch and we're just going to texture. Uh, the whole pattern. Like I said, this was an easier way for me to texture um, larger pieces. I just found it a lot nicer. Again, we're going to build up the sides a little bit thicker on our rolling pins so that we can get better texturing with patterns. So all you want to do is just go back and forth on it sides just to get rid of those I don't know it just it makes it look nicer I think <laughs> now boom, there goes our thing now one of the things I notice is because it's an octagon 
right? So, when, and this is just a test pattern. Like, yes, it does look like octagons, um, but when I burnt them, I went a little fast and I didn't do very straight lines, uh, which would be nicer if you want to do it. But we're gonna mod podge also this stuff and uh, hopefully it'll look a lot better when it's in there. Because there was a couple of pieces, like as an example, I kind of slipped and went right here, went up. It'll get, with the Mod Podge and the paint, I'm thinking it'll get a little bit different look to it. So, so all we're gonna do is just a little bit of this, just to give it a different type of texturing look. And then, we will take our Mod Podge with paint and a little bit of diluted water. Might have to add a little bit more water to it because we want it to flow, flow through the cracks also, but also having up the Mod Podge so it could harden up our piece. Give it a good little shaking and and just find a big enough brush and we're just going to get it into all the little cracks and corners and that again will harden and it'll darken up our piece I'll continue with this and I'll show you when it's done alright so once you have added your Mod Podge to it you can see that it's gotten a look to it. What I want to do is I want to do something different. Instead of just using a white, because it's always white. We always kind of, I'm going to try something different. I got my fan brush here. I added a white and a yellow and some glue uh, to this with, of course, some water mix. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the tops, sort of like dry brushing it on there, getting some color to it so that we can see maybe a different look because everybody always puts like a white or a gray or a black on their things I don't know I wanted to try something different so I'm just gonna hit the sides sort of give it that off look see what it looks like when it dries I think that's best thing to do unless it gets it gives it a different kind of texturing look You don't want it on there too thick. Noticeable, but not standing out noticeable. So just kind of wipe it down. It's time for a new one. What this will do is it'll make the tiles stand out a bit more. And then adding the glue also to our mixture will harden up our piece so we're just fanning it on going every way like so so you can see it has brightened it up it doesn't make it so dingy dark all the time it some some highlighted color we go from there and we don't want to put too much on our paintbrush so that it just looks like we're globbing it on it we're sort of rubbing it in there are some darker spots with the Mod Podge that kind of, it just happens, right? Not the best wash maker <laughs> when it comes up to this, it's like a beehive. Okay. Trying to get the edges more so that it'll highlight stand out more. I think that's what I'm trying to do with that. I think. We 
I'm going to let this set and dry for a little bit. Um, I think one of the things for the build next time, if this is asked for to do again, is to do better octagon squares. Very, you know, because as you can see, you can see some of them don't look very octagonical. <laughs> is that a word? But they do have that look of what you're playing on. Some of them are too small. You know, I, I was just playing around to see what it would look like as a grid. Um, you know, something different. I just wanted to see if this, what it would do. Now, bottom line is the gameplay is very simple. The person who's using the characters can actually have it so that the movement is turning and whatever the squares or the octagons represent, either a foot, 10 feet, a thousand feet, whatever it is, that's what they can have on it. We can build the design around it if we want, sort of both double kind of playing one to the other. I don't know. I think it works. I'm not sure. I mean, you could add any kind of, you know, pieces to your octagon sets to make them look good. I mean, you could add monsters if you want. Whatever you feel like doing. Let me know what you think. Would it be something different? It's a lot more work to do the hectagon than it is to do the one inch squares. Not that much, but it is a lot more work because doing out the pattern and then trying to figure out how to cut them in and make them proper. I did the burning part, like I said, did it kind of fast. I just wanted to show you that it's very possible that it's there. So, you know, it looks pretty cool. Looks like it would work. I'm not sure if this is what that person was asking me to do um, in the sense of how would it work in the gameplay. I'm thinking, hell, you know what? Anything's possible. You just got to add your characters in it and go from there. What do we say? If I could do it, you can do it. Well, I just did it. Thanks for watching, guys. Choose your own path. I'll let the link down. I always put a link from the tip jar if you guys want to help donate to the channel. It's just something out there to ask. Um, stay tuned for something that's coming. Something's coming to this guy. I ain't going to tell you shit, though. I ain't going to tell you yet. You guys have to wait. When it's here, I'll post a video of it so you guys can see. Anyway... Be safe, don't be sick, or don't get sick. Um, do stuff like this, it's great, it's fun. Choose your own path, guys. Thanks for watching.